basically, uh, I just have a couple of questions, nothing big. Um, just some questions about your role as Cliff Springer and like your, your involvement in music and whatnot. Um, first off, in his preparation for the role of the Joker, Heath Ledger spent days in isolation immersing himself in his role, and I trust you did the same for Cliff Springer. Well, if you think about what Cliff Springer is as, as a boarder and, you know, a leech and, and someone who drinks everybody else's drinks and turns up at parties, uh, I, I've probably been practicing for this role for about five years. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yes, right lots of prep. Yeah, I noticed how you kind of broke the fourth wall in the film. You just appeared in places. Like, you were playing one p the organ, then you were playing the piano the next minute. Yeah, it was a bit cheeky. I, I, I think it's just because um, I, was, I was playing live on set. You know, obviously you couldn't hear what I was playing, but when I was on set with Baz, he was always just like, Brendan, keep playing, keep playing all the time, never stop playing. <laughs> uh, so we just kept going, which meant every time I saw a free piano, I'd just, like, bolt onto the other set and start playing. Just magnetized. Who was your favorite I character? character? Oh, wow, my favorite Gatsby character. Well, I, I think for me, Jordan Baker um, is, is such an incredible character. I mean, she, she almost watches the whole of Gatsby unfold from, you know, from an outside world point of view. And right. I think she was, she was beautifully portrayed by Elizabeth Debicki. Oh, um, very who was, was, Yeah, and, and she was gorgeous on set as well, really generous um, with everybody in the cast. Uh, but, yeah, I, I do love experiencing Gatsby from her perspective and from and from the other perspectives you know obviously obviously Nick is is our lead voice in the book but I think it's it's kind of exciting to to, to have this film where you you can experience it more from from other characters like you know Myrtle for example I feel like uh, people might might connect in a whole new way that they may not have known beforehand and what I'm loving what I'm absolutely loving is this film is taking people to the book. So people who right. are seeing this film and haven't read it are, are, are obviously going back to the book because sales have gone to the roof. Um, and so for me, if, if I hadn't read the book and I, I was a young person seeing Gatsby for the first time, I, I don't know, I might see someone, a character like Jordan Baker, and then I knew I would have to be a part of that, that book and, and everything that comes with it. So, yeah, I love her. Definitely. Kind of the embodiment of the whole, like, a mysterious flapper kind of kind of lifestyle. Yeah. I think she's portrayed very well as well. Of, of course, she's done, uh, I forget the name, but uh, an actual famous golfer of the time that Fitzgerald was, was comparing her to. And, you know, I, 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 love, I love the description that she never sweats, you know, she's yeah. that cool. You know? and, and that's well portrayed as well in the film in that beautiful fight scene that she's just sitting there coolly letting, you know, everyone fight around her as she just sort of, just maintains her poise. Yeah, yeah, exactly. She was always so cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so obviously, the Gatsby has kind of like a cult, in which it, I think it's cool how like um, Gatsby, it's it's a popular medium. Like everyone knows about Gatsby. However, it still maintains the cult following. Like I don't know, like Rocky Horror or, or something, something yeah. like that. Kind of maintains. Um, in I don't know if it's different in Australia, but what what's the what's the um, What's the fan base like there? Um, well, uh, Baz is getting asked this question a lot. He was asked it um, on on the national news program today. You know, uh, wasn't he wasn't he nervous taking on what many people call the, the one of the great American novels? Right. Um, and almost what right did he have to to be taking it up as a challenge? Um, but Gatsby is loved here. We we all study it at high school as well. I feel like the whole globe seems to study Gatsby at right. some point. Um, so yeah, it's 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 a beautiful work that I feel. If if you can't attach yourself to the national pride of it, or of course the American history of it, it's still one of the greatest love stories out there. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, and you'll ne we'll never stop relating to that ever. Did you get to take home one of the inflatable zebras? <laughs> a lot of people ask me what I get to take home. Uh, unfortunately, unfortunately, most of it ends up in um, museums. Um, but I, I, what did I? I stole my glass. I stole the clip stringer glasses. You got it. Uh, yeah, 
Yeah, so I'm going to wear them because we have the Australian premiere tomorrow, so I'm going to wear them. Um, but yeah, otherwise, it's it's all in, in a glass case um, in, a, in a hotel right now uh, in Hollywood. So I think it's, it's going to be shown around, but, but pretty much everything that you could take was like streamers and stuff like that. So, Lots of confetti, I imagine. Yeah, yeah. Oh, there was just a little bit of confetti on there. <laughs> just a bit. That's a bit. <laughs> just, just, just so much that they could dump it on that one girl in that one scene. Forever, it just never it ended, just and you came out. And you found it in places that you wouldn't believe. <laughs> Days after filming. <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna ask what those were, but I can only imagine. Yeah. <laughs> Onto your music career, I'd like to touch on that a little bit. Um, the video for uh, "Stupid," which it, it's a great song. It's very catchy. Um, I actually played it to um, some students. Um, they were instantly hooked. They were like, wow, this is Klitschfinger. This is who he is. Um, this is fabulous. Um, and so um, where'd you get the inspiration for that? For the whole kind of dead party, the girl throwing the cake down, and you're just dancing gaily in the middle of the screen. I love it. I think, um, well, you know, when I, I wrote the song on my uke, my little Murphy Brown uke here, and it was like originally, it was like, it was Katy Perry hot and cold, I was singing to that one day, which you can still sing along to, stupid. Um, and, and so it always had a dance spirit in the song, it was always some, even though it is recorded on a uke and, and all the production is very simple, it still has a, a great fun dance vibe, and I love dancing, like, you can't stop me right. from dancing. You know, that is just... When you get the go fever, out, I mean, it, it just happens. Yes, it just sort of comes on and it doesn't stop. And, <laughs> and when I, I go out, I don't try and, like, dance cool or anything. You just... you got to move. And and right. so it, the directors were my friends. Uh, uh, my close friends who made the video. And it's <laughs> going to be... And they said it's going to be a party. So I, I didn't actually see what the girl was doing until after the first take. And so we went back and I just cried with laughter. She is spectacular, that actress. Wonderful. <laughs> and then to see it all explode, and we did it all in one take um, as well, which I, I love. And, and people seem to, to discover new things about it, you know, when they watch it a second time, you know, the, the little details of the girl in the background can be really surprising.